It's February 17th, 2021. I'm Pastor Edgar and these are Afterthoughts. I was thinking about uh, the connection between understanding God's love for us and uh, the praying that we do and receiving what we pray for. Now, God's love is absolutely enormous for his children. Uh, Romans 5 verse 8 says, uh, God showed his love that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, God saved us because he loves us. And then in John chapter 16, verse 27, we, we hear that, that God loves us because we love Jesus and believe that he came from God, which is so wild because uh, God saved us uh, and then that enabled us to love Jesus and to believe that Jesus is from God and God loves us for that. <laughs> so he, he, his love is just completely surrounds everything about salvation, everything about us uh, believing and trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about God's love for us. Um, so God saved us by his grace alone and then God gave us by his grace alone the ability to believe in and love the Lord Jesus Christ. And I was thinking about the Lord loving us. To, to biblically understand the Lord's love for us, we have to biblically understand what sin is. You know, the Father didn't save us through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ because we were broken. <laughs> that, today there's a kind of a trend talking about brokenness uh, as if that um, somehow is equivalent to sin. Well, they, they don't even talk about sin. Uh, they, there's a lot that don't believe in sin. They just talk about brokenness instead, that God saved us to heal our brokenness. That's not biblical. Not, not at all. God saved us, um, as, the, as, as the angel said to Joseph in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, that Jesus would come to save his people from their sin. So Jesus came to save people not from brokenness, but from their sin. And the results of sin, uh, of course, would be wrapped up in that, but we are saved from our sin. And what that's all about is that we deserve eternal punishment because of our sin. Sin is that bad. God saved us from that eternal punishment as and, and that includes, he saved us from not knowing him, living a, a, an eternity of not knowing him and not worshiping him. You know, that, that's also included in that. He saved us from eternal punishment and from this eternal existence of not knowing him and loving him and worshiping him. God is incredible what he did for us. So you, you cannot understand biblically how wonderful, incredible, and incredible God's love is for his people unless you understand biblically what sin is and that you are a sinner. Now I, I think there's a connection uh, between understanding God's love for us and what we pray for, praying and receiving what we pray for. And this uh, comes about from the passage that we just looked at this last Sunday in John chapter 16. What's helpful to understand is John chapter 14 to 17, those four chapters, all take place in the upper room. It's one conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples uh, at the Last Supper. So in chapter 15, verse 11, he talks about their joy being full. And in chapter 16, verse 23 and 24, he talks about the same thing, their joy being full. So in chapter 15, uh, the disciples' joy, being full of joy, comes from abiding in Christ, loving Him and obeying Him and growing spiritual fruit. So that is their joy being full, growing in abiding in God. And in chapter 16, it's about uh, asking God for anything and receiving it. So both are to be done for our joy to be full. Okay, so for Jesus to mean that we ask for food, shelter, entertainment, comfort, and health, uh, 
that, that we are to ask for that and we are to receive that and then our joy will be full. That doesn't fit. That doesn't seem to fit. That doesn't seem to be like what Jesus had in mind of us asking for anything and receiving it for that joy to be full. It must be about asking for what is truly important. And what is truly important? Well, it would be the abiding in God, loving Him, obeying Him, uh, His fruit growing in us. You know, sanctification and Christ-likeness growing in us. We, we growing into being more surrendered, more in love, more Christ-like uh, toward the Lord. So there'd be like things, praying, asking for those things, uh, praying for and receiving increased abiding in Christ. Maybe that's what Jesus has in mind here of what we should be asking for. You know, praying for a growing hunger for His Word. Um, praying for understanding of God's Word. Having God's thoughts become our thoughts. Growing in patience and kindness and love. Uh, growing in our understanding of our identity in God. Understanding God's love for us. Knowing what sin is. Those kinds of things. Asking for those things from the Lord and receiving those things so that we grow in our abiding in the Lord. In the Lord. And us praying for those things for our brothers and sisters, for each other. Instead of what we normally do, which is so focused on praying for each other's health and safety. As if that's the ultimate importance in our lives. And it's not. It's the other things. The, it's the abiding in Christ. And those things that are related to that from John chapter 15, the beginning there. Abiding in Him. So, God's love is absolutely amazing. It's incredible. Incredible. And we need to be praying that for ourselves and for each other that we grow in knowing God and His love and abiding in Him and receiving those things. It's when we're abiding in Him that we start understanding how incredible His love is. And so we should be praying for our abiding in the Lord. And the Lord says that He will give us those things that we ask for which means He will bless us with our abiding in the Lord. Isn't that amazing? So, so He does that so our joy will be full. So brothers and sisters, pray for your abiding in the Lord. Pray for my abiding in the Lord so that our joy will be full. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, have any comments, please forward them to me. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. God bless you.